hair, I know your ma. <laughs> I know your ma. Uh, I, I, I don't know your ma. Uh, hello and welcome to uh, the Mondo Cinemuck uh, film uh, program YouTube series, whatever the fuck, whatever it is. Welcome to it. Um, Now usually, what, what I want to do is I, as, as I want to sit in there uh, going on about, about certain genres of film that I like and, and, a, and a certain, you know, top five lists and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and I was planning to do that uh, this time. Um, I, was, I was going to make an episode all about um, creativity. Creativity and its representation on film, alright? So films about, about painters, uh, films about about carpenters, about writers, but in the middle of, of putting that together, um, I went down that there in London uh, to talk to, to Billy Chainsaw for a while. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's got his new, uh, his debut actually, exhibition going on uh, down in, in, in central London. So I thought I'll go down and have a word with him. It turned out to be fucking fascinating, and his work is beautiful. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just put that together as a, as a wee, as a wee episode. Um, you know, so, so yeah, it gets me out of the house, don't it? Uh, so I'm on my way uh, to meet Billy Chainsaw at that uh, multi-tiered art hall of no small renown, uh, the Horse Hospital uh, in Central London. So called, of course, because, because that's what it used to be. No horses there now. Too much art. Too much bloody art for the horses. Horses no time for art. Just too busy running around, having hooves, being half of a centaur. No time. Too busy being turned into paintbrushes to worry about bloody painting the bloody horse. Set for a Justin, the artistic horse, of course. And uh, this cunt here at Painting Horse dot com where him and his horses paint like there's a uh, no tomorrow So I'm here at the horse hospital um, at the debut show by, by Billy Chainsaw called uh, X More Than a Journey Into the Unknown. Billy's here. Billy, thank you very much for, for gabbing to me this, this afternoon. Um, the, the show's absolutely terrific. Uh, now, most people will know you, uh, first and foremost, I suppose, as a, as a film critic. Um, yeah. You know, especially for your, your championing of, I suppose, more kind of, um, well, transgressive and, and, and... The unusual. The horror. unusual, yeah. The unusual horror, things like that. Um, first of all, as a critic, I mean, were you at all apprehensive about, about putting your own work out there for, you know, for scrutiny, I suppose? Um, apprehension wasn't something that I considered. 
It's just I've never shown it to anybody before, except for mates. I've always done it for donkey's years. Mm. Now, ever since I was a little kid, I've been drawing and painting and stuff, and I'd give people things for presents and stuff. And then earlier this year, this is actually, this is called Fear, which you can actually make out in the end. Um, it's where it all started. So here we've got, you know, a, a few of your, um, your recurring themes, uh, you know, blasting uh, from one place. We've got Burroughs, um, here we've got a black dot burrows down here, black dot eyes. We've got the 23. Um, well, what is what is the 23 thing? I, all I'm going to say about 23 is I came into association with it via Burrows. Um, I've since found out that I'm pretty sure it was Robert Anton Wilson that started the enigma of 23. But it's something. Uh, Google William Burroughs, Anton Wilson, and the number 23. Because it's a journey. I want you to go on the same journey that I went on. Uh, back in the days before uh, electronic technology and communication, um, it was a lot harder to get access to information. Mm. Um, and sometimes, as brilliant as technology is, what's lacking is that journey. It's, it's very accessible now. So, I want you to go on your own journey and discover the enigma of number 23 because once you're aware of it, you will see it everywhere. And again, I see everything, all art forms, film, music, literature, everything is subjective. Nobody's opinion is wrong as to what something is good or isn't good in art. It's all relevant. Um, I don't care if people come along to see this show and say it's rubbish. It doesn't matter. This is what came out of me. This is what I'm proud of. There are people that will come and like it, I'm sure. Say la vie, that's the nature of the beast. But look into the enigma of 23. Now, um, Billy just mentioned technology. Here's a piece of technology of a sort. Um, very, very beautiful, uh, beautifully crafted um, and, and, and decorated uh, a Ouija board. I don't know if it, if it will answer any questions for me. Will I get to work on time? I don't know. Billy, tell me about this. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, well, I see. It's all subjective. I disagree with you. This is the anti-technology. Um, the Ouija board, there's nothing technologi technological about it. The reason for this is the unknown. Do you, is there life after death? Do you believe there's life after death? Do I believe there's life after death? Don't know yet. That may be answered, it may be not. I don't, I, what I ask, with my art, I propose questions, but I don't profess to offer any answers. It's up to you. I've got this concept of hanging a Ouija board, one of the original ones that was mass produced in, um, America. I wanted a used one so that um, there might be something still present, who knows, and hung it so that it was suspended hanging in air within an old bad frame. I don't care that you can see the fishing wire. To me that buys into the old clairvoyance that with the smoke and mirrors, with all the trickery mm. and, you know, were they real? Some people believe they were. I've never been to one, so I don't know. So sometimes you can't see it, sometimes you can, depending on the light or if you take a photograph, but that's okay, because that's all part of that, that whole mystique, and sometimes they were tricksters. All right, so we've got a lot of, um, here, here's some Franju, some Franju imagery here. We've got Man Ray over there, been well, a bit of Snow White up there. Um, a lot of kind of film references and, 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 and film influence coming through here. Um, how, how important is that to, to, your, to, your, to your artwork? Um, I don't know how important it is. It's just part of me. All of this is um, an accumulation of years and years of things that have influenced me and stayed within me. And now I'm doing art. They're kind of all fighting to come out, out at the same time. But they all seem to have the same theme. And it's like... With this, with the Judex imagery, uh, for instance, I everything just comes to it just to, it appears to me. 
It's like, I know I want to do some more pictures. I never sit down and do thumbnail sketches of things unless I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea and then I just do a little quick reference because I like to keep it completely free-flowing and random. I don't think, oh, I need a picture of this to go on there. I'll have part of the image um, in my head and then sometimes it might be a big space. Like, follow me quickly. Over here, for instance. This is a perfect example of that. All I had this was this section without the question marks. I didn't know what to put there. And then, about a week before the show, I saw this image, and uh, there it is. Applied the question marks, because question marks are very important. You should question everything. Back over here. But it was always inevitable that films would be part of it, because they're such a big part of my life. Um, for that, I have my mum to thank for Beatrice. BT to her mates, um, because when I was supposed to be tucked up in bed, as far as my dad was concerned, she was allowing me downstairs to watch the horror films with her and things like Tales of Mystery and Imagination. She used to take me to the cinema from when I was a very young age. Um, so that's always been a, a big part of my life, the moving image, even though I render it as still imagery. So inevitably, film was always going to be a big part of anything that I do, really. What did you want to know about this? Well, I, I like this kind of, this, this, this noise around us and then these kind of, um, you know, these recurring um, uh, images um, which, which show up, you know, variations on, on these themes show up all over the place. Um, I like this kind of, it's, it's almost like something breaking through static to an extent. Um, so I suppose, I mean, is that, that, that's, that's essentially how you work, would you say? Well, I like that definition because um, the background always comes first. Um, it is like noise, and I see it like noise. It's like, it, there's whole things about hidden portals, which I believe strongly in, that you can access other dimensions, and, but at the same time, that whoever's in the other dimension can access it to us. And th these, to some degrees, could be breaking through from that other dimension. Not specifically this picture, but there are pictures here, and it's represented in some of the early work that I've done. But yeah, it is like nice, it's like interference. And like sometimes, I can't actually remember the name of that phen phenomena, but there is one where um, people believe that they can contact the dead or get contacted by the dead through things like watching static on TV. Yeah, it's, uh, what is it, electronic voice phenomena and all That's that? That's it, there was or a film. Uh, White Noise was, there you go. Was, um, was it Michael Keaton, somebody? Yeah, which I never saw, but you know, it, it's all part of that. I like the fact that you describe it noise because it's like that. Because, okay, this is a found image. Most of my work is abstract, expressionist. You know, when I start doing, for instance, this noise in the background, I don't know how it's going to look. Because as I say, that's how I like it to be random. I always try and work within the same colour palette. Um, you should ask me about that in a little bit. And see where it goes from there. I, I like how this one kind of, um, you know, there's a, there's a juxtaposition here. Well, this is quite stark. It's got, you know, it's, it's quite, um, quite to the point, whereas you've, you've, got a lot of, um, you've got a lot of very busy images um, surrounding it in the gallery. Here you've just got your black, your white skull, some ditties. That's it. Uh, hot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, it's like um, also as a lot. You know, you can't deny that there's emotion that goes into your work, and it's that's evidently the mood that I was in when I was doing it. It was a lot starker um, than the rest of it. And this isn't something that just I don't sit down and just finish off a picture. Sometimes I do, but like with this one, for instance. I mean, it's called this is a called Back to Reality number two, because I've actually used this image in another picture, which is not shown. And again, you've got the, you know, the reversal of the, the real image. And so, are you looking, is this us looking into something, or is it them looking out at us from kind of another dimension? I like to reverse things. Death. What can you say about that? 
it's omnipotent, it's everywhere. And as regarding the, the cross, the crucifix, a detail of it, that features a lot in my work because I have faith in something, in everything really. Um, but that just took on itself. These three elements were there first. So I'd got this shape. It just said crucifix. Uh, what I will say though is that, um, like Aaron's, you know, I know he, he knows me initially through my writing. And writing, while you do it for yourself, you're generally doing it for somebody else as well. Well, the kind of writing I do, because it's journalistic, so you're writing for an audience. That doesn't dictate what you write, although sometimes it depends on the editorial stance of the magazine. You obviously have to present the stuff in a, in a, a manner which is going to appeal to the readers. But I always feel that I'm doing it for somebody else, as much as I enjoy it. But where, with art, it's just like total freedom. It's like when I go in my studio, I call it the garage, because that's what it is. Um, Warhol had his studio. William Burroughs had the bunker. I've got the garage. Or should I call it the lock-up? I'll call it the garage. Anyway, when I go in there, um, it's like I'm completely shut off from it, everything except for my own thoughts, really. I rarely play music, sometimes I do. But um, when I create art, it's purely for myself. Everything's cliched. It's, um, this is going to be full of cliched. If you talk to anybody, it's going to be full of cliched. And there's a good reason for that because that's life. Life is just one big cliche. And as soon as I'm in there, I feel a change come over me. And I don't leave there until I've done some stuff. And it just happens all the time. I've never once walked in there and been stuck for something to do. It all just, it's like magic. M-A-G-I-C-K. It just happens. And I am never more at home as much as I love my wife and child, they mean the whole world to me, beyond that actually. Um, I'm never more at home than when I'm creating art. Because it's just me. It's just coming out of me. I'm not looking at reference books or anything like that. I, obviously I go in, as you can see, I, I use fan images, but um, there is no pressure. It is the least stressful thing I during my existence. Siphony. <laughs>